Hi, my name is Alyssa Velez, and I'll be doing Illuminated Manuscript. Before the invention of the printing press in Europe around 1455, all books were handwritten and decorated. The word manuscript is derived from the Latin words manus, hand, and scriptus from scribe, to write. Illuminated from the Latin illuminare, to light up. Den denotes the glow created by the radiant colors of the illustrations as well as by real gold and silver. Illuminations took the form of decorated letters, borders, and independent figurative scenes, also called miniatures. One magnificent manuscript in the Gettys collection is the Gualanid Este Hours, seen above. Though sub Tuously decorated with incredible detail, the book is only about four inches tall. Illuminated largely by Italian artist Tadio Crivelli, these two pages in particular demonstrate superb examples of miniature and border illumination, complete with a historiated initial, a letter containing identifiable narrative scenes or figures. The miniature on the left-hand page shows the angel Gabriel and the Virgin Mary surrounded by naturalistic elements, flowers, peacocks, and trees crowd the border and with um, Renaissance heraldic symbols and personal mottos of the book's owners. Facing this page, the Virgin and Child embrace with within a historiated initial D flanked by the first prayers of the day in Latin. So who made the manuscripts? Until about the 12th century, the most elaborate, elaborate and beautiful illuminations were devoted to religious works and most manuscripts were produced in monasteries. In a monastery, the scriptorium was the center for both scholarly activity and the copy of texts. During the rise of universities in cities in the 12th and 13th centuries, scribes and illuminators were increasingly laymen who made their living by supplying fine manuscripts to noblemen. The new middle class and students and professors of emerging universities during the Renaissance, several important painters also worked within the pages of illuminated manuscripts, such, such as Gerard David, si Simon Benning, and Antonio Pisano, called Pisanello, as seen in the cutting at the left. So, how are manuscripts made? By the High Middle Ages, the making of manuscript was often divided among four distinct craftsmen, the parchment maker, the scribe, the illuminator, and the book binder. Typically, each belonged to a guild with specific guidelines and standards. The construction of an illuminated manuscript began with a parchment maker who prepared the animal skins used to make the leaves of a manuscript, although paper was present in Europe as early as the 14th century manuscripts were most often written on the specially prepared skin of cows, sheep, or goats. Though sometimes parchment makers use smaller animals, including rabbits and even squirrels. Though expensive, parchment provided a surface that was beautifully textured, translucent, and durable. Once the skins were prepared and cut, the scribe wrote the manuscript's text by hand. A scribe usually made his own quills and ink. In the manuscript page at the left, St. Mark is portrayed as a scribe dipping his quills into a pot of ink, and he sits before the lectern. Mark holds a knife in his left hand, used not only to sharpen his quill, but also to erase any marks on the manuscript by scratching away the top layer of the parchment along with the mistake. After the text was written, the illuminator added gilded details, if any, then provided the manuscript's painted decorations. The miniatures were painted with a variety of precious colors made from a wide range of sources, from vegetables and animal extracts to ground minerals from the earth. The number of variety of illuminate, illuminations in a single luxury manuscripts often require the collaboration of several craftsmen. For example, 
The Getty Spin Spinola Hour involves at least five main illumination illuminators and numerous workshop assistants. Together, the scribes and artists created a manuscript with 83 large illuminations filled with startling illuminations and intri intricate um, details, including architectural renderings and illuminate illustrations of follow flowers and fauna. A luxury manuscript was not considered complete without an equally fine binding to protect the manuscript, hold the leaves together, and keep them from absorbing moisture and therefore curling. The bookbinder affixed metal claps or ties of leather or fabric to keep the manuscript tightly closed. Bindings were sometimes embellished with paint, enamel, or with designs stamped into leather with metal tools. The most precious bindings were adorned with metalwork and jewels, particularly in the middle, early Middle Ages. Lastly, the co the cover from the from this sacramentary